Welcome uh, to the afternoon session. Uh, for our first talk of the afternoon session, uh, we're very happy to have Jen Binyak, who will tell us about firewalls uh, for wormholes. Okay, uh, thank you, Alex, for the introduction. Uh, I'm very happy to give a talk at uh, uh, this uh, workshop. Uh, my talk will be based on a uh, recent work with Douglas Stanford to adjust the uh, AMPS firewall paradox. Uh, so I'll start. Uh, the AMPS paper brings up two uh, versions of uh, information paradox about black holes. The first version concerned about the strong subjectivity of violation after page time for evaporating black holes. Uh, if we consider uh, uh, evaporating black holes after page time, then a new Hawking radiation will both have strong entanglement with the interior partner and early Hawking radiation. Uh, that simply just violates the strong subjectivity of uh, entanglement entropy. Uh, this version of the paradox has been addressed by using the ER equal to EPR idea, or more recently using the quantum extremal island formula. I would say, to me, I have a, a it's a satisfactory answer that uh, uh, this um, paradox being resolved by saying the interior is part of the Hawking radiation, or A equal to RB. There's another version of the uh, information paradox raised uh, in the AMPS paper. Uh, talk, talks about uh, uh, non-evaporating black holes. Uh, that is uh, whether typical states of black holes have firewall or not. Uh, the basic one of the argument in that paper goes as follows. Let's consider in a, a energy window and start with a state per psi that have a smooth horizon. Formally, that means one can write the per psi as a special integral state between B and B tutor, where B and B tutor are the uh, exterior and interior render modes. Now let's start with this precise state. We can act with a unitary operator that commutes with the Hamiltonian. Uh, here, this unitary operator I denoted as U of theta is the exponential of the number operator of the B, B mode. Uh, from the uh, classical um, uh, field analysis, one can uh, argue that the number operator commute with ADM mass, and therefore acting on this U theta should not change the energy of the state. And uh, But this do break the entanglement pattern between B and B tilde. Uh, that means acting on U theta on the original smooth horizon state, one gets a firewall state. But now there's a lot of the uh, B modes. We can create a lot of firewall states starting with the uh, uh, smooth states. And that leads to the conclusion in AMP's paper that uh, all typical states should have a firewall. Uh, in literature, there are various arguments uh, for it or against it, uh, including state dependence, frozen vacuum issues, or violation of Born's rule. Uh, I would say uh, even now, it's still an open question whether typical states should have a firewall. And with Douglas, we are trying to adjust this problem uh, using direct uh, bulk analysis. Uh, for that purpose, let us uh, formulate this uh, uh, typical state firewall products in a more concrete way. Uh, let's consider we start with a, a, a t equal to zero sum of your double state and uh, acting with a perturbation w on the left hand side, represented by this red dot. And we consider we jump in to the black hole on, from the right hand side at different times. We can wait uh, for some time, such as this W particle fall behind the singularity, uh, crash into the singularity, and then jumps in. Then the classical Panos diagram will uh, give us a result that the infoller should uh, experience a smooth horizon. That is uh, represented from the left hand side uh, diagram. Or we can jump in at an early time, t less than zero, then we will meet this W particle before it hits the singularity. Moreover, the scattering becomes stronger when uh, the time separation becomes larger. And effectively, after scrambling time, 
the proper time for informer cross the horizon and hit the singularity will vanish. Effectively, we will call this as a firewall state. So this classical answer that it's safe to jump in at a later time and dangerous at jumping at early time uh, is what given by uh, GR, but have attention with quantum mechanics. The reason being the black hole have a, a finite horizon and that means it have a finite degree of freedom. And if we evolve the time longer than e to the f, then both states at the uh, quantum state become a typical state in the quantum system. And uh, this classical picture give us two distinguished descriptions for the typical state of a black hole. And uh, something must go in one. Another perspective of this is that when we evolve this state with different times, we got different uh, 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 interior sizes, like the interior of the black hole is expanding when we evolve time uh, for the future. Effectively, every thermal time scale, we got a new state. And when T is bigger than E to the S, we simply get too many box states. And uh, so we expect there's a deviation uh, from the classical uh, uh, geometry from quantum mechanics. So what will be the answer for uh, Infora to jump in at a very late time black hole, namely a late time black hole where T is order E to the S? Um, based on the complexity equal to volume uh, argument, uh, Sachs can make a conjecture. He says the typical state should have 50% chance of having a firewall. And he calls this scenario as a gray hole scenario. So the basic argument goes as follows. So if we jump in into the smooth horizon state, one can look at the uh, einstein rosen bridge, the nice size connecting the double particle and the infrared. And this, uh, uh, this volume grows with time when uh, we're increasing the time. And he interpret this as saying the complexity of the state is increasing. But if we jump in for the, from the firewall state, as time evolves, the volume decrease, namely uh, the complexity is decreasing. But for a typical state, the complexity should saturate. So it never increases or decreases, but stays a constant, uh, maybe with small fluctuations. That seems to suggest that uh, it should have a 50% chance of having a firewall. <clears throat> In our work, uh, yeah, so that means there's a surprise if we combine quantum mechanics with gravity that uh, for the uh, infrared to see a different uh, uh, experience. So for example, if we, he jumps in, in this uh, uh, firewall state, there can be surprise that uh, uh, the infrared will meet a uh, uh, singularity with a smooth horizon. Or it could be that the infrared jumps in, into the smooth state, but uh, something happens that it meets a firewall. And such a surprise have a quantum mechanics nature associated with the finite Hilbert, Hilbert space dimension of the black hole. And our nature question is to ask if there are gravitational process that uh, bring you such surprise. And that's uh, uh, mainly our work uh, want to address. Uh, so far, are there any questions? Okay, if not, then let's uh, continue. So uh, now let's come to our work. So we propose a Bach mechanism to support the Susskind conjecture. Uh, moreover, this Bach mechanism is based on the um, chaotic nature of the black hole. More precisely, we argue that uh, after emitting a baby universe, which have a large size, a black hole can tunnel into a white hole state. And uh, when there's a perturbation, it contains a firewall. Uh, we use this uh, picture and in, uh, using JT gravity to calculate the probability of hitting a firewall with one baby universe emission. And our answer is that uh, uh, for a black hole of HT, the probability of hitting a firewall scale as T squared times E to the minus two S. Uh, S of E, where S of E is the entropy of the uh, microcanonical black hole we are considering, E as the energy of the black hole. 
This e to the minus two s e is associated with the uh, uh, non-protective nature of this uh, uh, baby universe emission process. Uh, more, more importantly, there's a factor of t squared coming from two moduli integral. One of the moduli integral corresponding to the size of the baby universe, changing the size of the baby universe. And another integral corresponding to the twist uh, of the baby universe when we grew in bra and cat. And these two uh, scale give us a factor of t squared. Uh, uh, importantly, this probability becomes order one when t scale is e to the s. And uh, so this leads to a non-trivial probability to hit a firewall to, uh, if one jumps in, into a late time black hole. So this is, uh, 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 this is what I'm going to talk about uh, during the talk how to calculate this probability and why emitting a large baby universe uh, can lead to a firewall. So let's have a look at the effect of baby universe emission. This basically is based on the shortening effect discovered by Phil Sat in his work in uh, 2019. So uh, let's consider uh, HT black hole where T is a, uh, large number, so it's a late time black hole. As I said, uh, the volume of the black hole grows linearly with time. And if we were in high dimensional, that means the uh, einstein rosen bridge would effectively become a cylinder, a long cylinder. If we are in 2D, which is a, 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 a gravity theory I'm going to talk about, then that effectively becomes just a line. The length of this uh, Einstein, uh, Einstein Rosen um, bridge grows linearly in time. So let's call it L1, L1 scale with T. And one can uh, think of the big universe emission process as a pinching process. Uh, we can consider two distant points on this uh, um, volume size that are separate by size A, by distance A, coming close together and uh, got emitted, pinched out. This process leads to a baby universe of size A and uh, the resulting geometry, because there's a shortcut connecting these two sides, leads to a new black hole interior of length L. This L, because, because of the emission of the, uh, this uh, A distance, the new uh, length L will be of length order T minus A. Again, because of the volume scales linearly with the time, that uh, means after the baby universe emission, the new black hole will have a younger age of age t minus a. This is a, a shortening effect. We have a, a, old time, a late time black hole emitted to an early time black hole. Uh, in our work, uh, we argue that this process still uh, makes sense if a is bigger than t. So naively, when a is bigger than t, then the lens, new lens L become negative. But what that actually means is that the age of the black hole become negative. And that means the black hole becomes a white hole state. And the lens will be proportional to the absolute value of the age. So the lens will be, the new lens, if A is bigger than T will be or the A minus T. So if we jump in into a black hole conditioning um, uh, such a large baby universe emission, so then we will effectively jump in, in a firewall state and uh, we will hit the singularity uh, at the horizon. So this is a, uh, a cartoon of uh, the uh, large baby universe emission uh, leads to a firewall. This shortening effect, this baby universe emission leads to a change the age of the black hole is very closely related to the chaotic nature of the black hole system. It has been used in various contexts to understand the uh, random matrix behavior of the black hole system. One of the uh, earliest example is the spectrum form factor discovered by Sat Schenker Stanford. Uh, for a chaotic system, we can consider the spectrum form factor, which can be think of as a overlap between thermophile late time thermophile double state with early time thermophile double state. Uh, based on the uh, random matrix universality, uh, the level repulsion of the energy spectrum, 
then uh, this uh, special form factor should have this ramp and plateau behavior. The ramp uh, have a linear integrals with the e to the minus two s suppression, and uh, it saturates to e to the minus uh, e to the minus s. <clears throat> this ramp behavior, if we were in consider just a single particle chaos, namely a particle moving on a billet, this ramp behavior is expanded by for a very long trajectory can form a, a periodic orbit. So a, a particle moving on billet originally it goes uh, deviate from its origin point, but uh, after time t it may comes back, and that explains this return to the original sum of the double state. Uh, in gravity, that effect is geometrized into the baby universe emission. Roughly speaking, one can think about this baby universe emission as the microstate has undergo, undergo such a periodic orbit of size A. So from gravity picture, this uh, explanation of this uh, ramp of the spectrum form factor is given by this uh, uh, double cone geometry, which describe an uh, exchange process, be, uh, exchange of baby universe between two uh, boundary systems. There's this one left boundary corresponding to uh, this overlap of the thermal field double state with itself, and there's another boundary corresponding to uh, its complex conjugate. And uh, this geometry describe an exchange process of uh, emitting a baby universe of size A. On this geometry, we can cut the uh, uh, geometry open, size open around, the, uh, for example, uh, around this size then we can interpret this growing as a, a overlap between a Hartree Hawking state in the cat, in the Hartree Hawking state with the zero time averaging with another Hartree Hawking state with a, a time averaging order T, but emitted a baby universe of A. Because uh, what I said before, the new Hartree Hawking uh, state, new box state after emitting a baby universe of A, will effectively be a Hartree Hawking state of uh, uh, H T minus A. So in order to have a large overlap, this stabilizes baby universe of order T. And then there's a relative twist between these two copies of system that is uh, uh, denoted as the S variable. Integrating over the twist gives us a linear T factor. Uh, in the end, this geometry is a wormhole geometry, doesn't contain any horizon, and compared to the two disks, it's e to the minus two s suppression, and that's explains this uh, ramp behavior. <clears throat> uh, closely related to this uh, spectrum form factor is the uh, Madasena's version of uh, information paradox, <laughs> which uh, says that. Uh, in an eternal black hole background, the two-point function should not decay forever if the system has finite Hilbert space dimension. In the uh, classical uh, Pulse diagram, so the volume is growing, signaturing the decoration between the two uh, boundaries of the thermal field double state. But uh, in order to uh, for the two-point function not decay, then we want the uh, one hole get shorter again. So that's what uh, uh, discovered mm -hmm. by Phil Sad. Uh, basically, after a baby universe emission, the, uh, the volume of the uh, two side black hole becomes shorter again, namely the two boundaries become recorrelated. And uh, that leads to a large answer for the two point function. Uh, I will uh, spend one slide to discuss field's calculation because it's very relevant to our calculation. So field calculates this late time two point function in GIT gravity. Uh, that only can see, consider uh, consists of one boundary, and it's coming from the uh, geometry of a handle disk topology. So this, this is a asymptotic boundary, and uh, we have a handle on this uh, uh, geometry. With uh, this red and black dots are the two point uh, two operators we inserted as a boundary. So at a uh, at a boundary we have a Lorentzian time erosion. Uh, large Lorentzian time evolution IT, and uh, here the cat with minus IT. On, the, on this geometry, there are different geodesic slicings. 
There's this L1 size that homologous to the asymptotic boundary, which will have a length of order T. That's the original black hole state. Then this shaded regime is a baby universe emission operator. It translates this L size into a union of L with a closed universe A. This L, the length of L will be approximately L1 minus A if A is smaller than T. And then we have the same copy from the cat. We have the L2, which is other T, and then the same baby universe emission operator. And then these two baby universes are grouped together with a relative twist S. If we were considering this two-point function, then two-point function gets contribution from all the geodesics. So we will need to sum over L1, L, L2, and then there's also close geode uh, also geodesics that are going through this uh, uh, baby universe. If we're cutting around those other L slices, we'll get a, a different baby universe uh, emission uh, picture. This is a mapping class group on this uh, handle disk geometry. But feel sure that uh, if you sum over all this non-self-crossing geodesics, then this summation effectively cancel with the mapping class group. And in the end, you can just integrate him over the A and S with uh, only contribution coming from two point function coming from the L size. And that leads to uh, one uh, exact answer for the two point function, but we will not uh, use that answer here. In the, on the, uh, we will consider the two point function to be heavy. If the two point function will be heavy, then we expect that only the shortest geodesic will give you the two-point function. And let's take that to be the L. Then uh, we, will, we will just integrating over the A and S with weighted by this uh, shortest geodesic less, e to the minus that L, and that is large. This will effectively, because L is given by A minus T, this effectively will uh, localize A at uh, around T. So localize the baby universe of size T, just like the, for the spectrum form factor. If we do the integral, we got the following result, uh, T over delta times E to the minus two S. This one over delta factor coming from this uh, integral of A, this T factor coming from this S integral, which gives you a factor of T. Importantly, uh, this wealth data represents the fluctuation of A that around T. So that's a smoking gun. i tell you that uh, this new size L can have both black hole and the firewall, a uh, smooth horizon and the firewall component because this A can be bigger than T leads to a, a, a white hole state, uh, A, white hole state for the new uh, interior. <clears throat> So our job is then uh, to remove this two-point function and directly calculate the probability of the uh, uh, new slice to be, uh, to be a firewall state. Um, in this two-point two function, the large component of the firewall state are suppressed due to this uh, operator uh, suppression. We want to remove that. So, we want to calculate this firewall probability. Uh, sorry, is there any questions? Okay, so if not, let me uh, continue. So, so naive calculation in JT gravity would be just integrating over the size of the baby universe, well, just conditioning how it's bigger than T. But that gives us a nonsense because the result is infinity. The reason we, uh, this is wrong is because the mapping class group are the large diffeomorphism symmetries that we forget about in this calculation. Uh, as, as, uh, as we have discussed already, on these geometries, there's different slicing of this L slice, and that will correspond to different uh, uh, baby universe emission uh, process. But they all correspond to the same Euclidean geometry and they are equivalent. And for the infolder, there's only a unique uh, slice that uh, it can encounter. So we should gauge out this different uh, baby universe emission uh, events. 
To do that, we need to uh, work out how the mapping class group acts. But for that, let me first describe a, a simplification that happens in this problem due to this large time evolution. So since the time is large, we are considering Riemann surfaces where its geodesics are very large. And since for Riemann surface, its area is fixed, it's fixed by topology. So in order to keep the area as a constant while increasing its boundaries, then the distance between the boundaries has to shrink. And effectively, this becomes a strip uh, picture. Uh, so let me describe these two uh, events of the smooth horizon state and the firewall horizon state, the, uh, the wormhole geometry for those uh, states. So for the smooth states, we emit a baby universe A that is smaller than T, smaller than LT. That means this uh, uh, long geodesic, the original geodesic, this L1, partially hug around this uh, um, closed universe A, but it has some leftover. And that leftover has to follow closely to the new state, a uh, new slice L. And that gives you uh, the new slice L uh, have a length proportional to T minus A. Well, this picture is, uh, is just the cartoon picture I was drawing for the baby universe emission, uh, pinching pro uh, process of the baby universe emission. One can see that uh, when we're increasing the time, when T is getting larger, this L is getting longer. So it's a, uh, as time evolves, this, the new state is expanding, it's a smooth state. On the other hand, if the baby universe A is bigger than LT, then it has to be that the L, the union of L and L1 hug around A. That leads to the geometric condition that the new state L have length A minus LT. As we're increasing time, uh, uh, this LT getting larger, the L getting smaller. Namely, the, the new slice is shrinking with time evolution. And that means this state is a, a firewall state. Now let's look at how the mapping class group act, acts on this strip picture. <clears throat> uh, we will focus on the, uh, um, the limit where, uh, for the firewall state, A bigger than T. When we uh, do the mapping class group, we first need to glue these two baby universe A's, but we glue them up to a relative twist labeled by this S. So here, these two cross points are identified. Similarly, all these nearby points are identified with a relative twist S. Now we can cut this, ge uh, cut this uh, uh, handle disk geometry around a different geodesic slice that goes through this uh, identification. This gives us a, a shorter geodesic length of order L minus S. This L prime is L minus S. And uh, then it have, uh, uh, it's, for the L prime, there's another closed geodesic that does not intersect L prime, which we call A prime. That basically is like um, going from uh, here, wind around and coming through here to identify. So A prime, have a, a shorter, uh, shorter length as well. It's the order A minus S. And this mapping class group maps different baby universe emission process. It maps a large baby universe emission to a smaller baby universe emission. And they corresponding to the different uh, slicing of the thin geometry. So we should treat them as a gauge equivalent. Now, uh, let's consider when the twist S is bigger than the L. So we got different scenario. So uh, now this identification uh, uh, is shown in this figure. Now, if we cut around this uh, uh, new geodesic slice, we got this different picture. This picture is none of the uh, two, early two pictures I've drawn. And uh, this picture actually is an offshore geometry. By offshore, I mean the following. For this wormhole geometry, there's a harsh Hawking wave function associated with this L1 and L2, the original black hole size 
those are oscillating. Uh, these have some oscillating phase. Well, the, that's the, the usual story that uh, uh, the Hutch Hawking wave function uh, depends on the length oscillatory. And uh, when we ungrew uh, this uh, wave function with uh, handle disk geometry, we're integrating over the length of L1 and L2. That represents as integrating over the location of this red and the black dots. In other words, it, it's a uh, represent integrating over this uh, 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 this angle of this red and black dot. On this left geometry, the lens, the geodesic lens, is non-analytic with respect to this angle. And that, after integrating over the angle, leads to a non-zero answer, leads to a non-zero set point. But for the right-hand geometry, the lens is analytic with respect to these two angles. And after integrating, uh, this without vanish goes to zero. It's like a depth function integral. And uh, that means this mapping class group truncate when the S is bigger than L. It relates different uh, on-shell slicing, different on-shell slices uh, by reducing the length of the on-shell slice until L is smaller than S. Geometrically, L smaller than S means on the L size, there's a locality, uh, no shortcut. So if S is uh, smaller than L, like in this figure, then on this dashed line, there's two distant points on this L size, naively looks far, uh, far apart on this L size, but they are actually close together by going through this compass geometry, just like this, uh, uh, the original uh, L1 size. But um, when it's truncated, then there's no shortcut from on this uh, dash line on this L size. So that means we can impose this no shortcut condition and uh, uh, to fix the mapping class group. Uh, so after we're imposing this no shortcut condition, that requires uh, S need to, need to be bigger than L. And similarly, A minus S needs to be bigger than L. Uh, together with the uh, condition that L equal to A minus T, that impose the range of the S need to be bigger than A minus T and smaller than T. Yeah, just a, uh, L equal to A minus T, that's the left-hand side, and uh, A minus L is T. So that's uh, this condition. And furthermore, this in, uh, constraint the size of the big universe A need to be smaller than 2T. So after imposing the mapping class group, we bound the size of the baby universe. We can uh, plug this in and calculate the firewall probability. So integrating over these two moduli, that gives us the overall T squared factor. Importantly, once again, this is order one when T is of order e to the S. So you may not be very lucky if you jump into the very old black hole. So that's about the firewall uh, probability. And uh, we can similarly consider the smooth horizon probability. For the smooth horizon geometry, the new short, no shortcut condition automatically satisfied because uh, here this length is uh, zero. Any twist will be necessarily be bigger than the middle region of the L. And uh, we're just integrating over A and S without, uh, uh, with only constraints that A need to be smaller than T. Uh, surprisingly, we got the same answer as the firewall probability. In uh, uh, interesting ph phenomenon is that when T is order E to the S, that's a, uh, that's a time when uh, uh, the ramp becomes a plateau, terminates to plateau, both probability becomes one half. But this is a not justified uh, uh, answer because if T is order E to the S, there may be higher uh, uh, baby universe emission process we need to consider. And, uh, but that's an interesting phenomenon that uh, supports uh, Susskind conjecture. Uh, in the end, I want to talk about uh, unitarity. Sorry, how, how, long, uh, how many times do I have left? You have a few minutes left. Uh, okay. Plus questions. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, so uh, unitarity 
requires the whole genus one wormhole contribution to the patching function should be time independent because the forward and backwards evolution just cancels. The results should be just a small answer. But we see that uh, it, uh, its contribution to the firewall and smooth probability both grow with time. Uh, and particularly, it's bigger than the result of the patching function. That's also true for the two-point function in fields calculation. The two-point function, late time two-point function is simply bigger than the patching function. What that means is that uh, there's a negative piece in this uh, uh, geometry that uh, when you calculate in the patching function, it cancels the firewall and the smooth probability. But for the firewall problem, for the firewall problem, uh, this such a negative piece should cancel with a disk probability, such that we got a positive probability distribution. Uh, we uh, study this negative piece in a simple problem, uh, which is a three-hole geometry, not the uh, handle disk geometry, but it's a three-hole geometry where you also have this uh, uh, contribution of the firewall probability uh, coming from baby universe emissions. But then you also have a negative piece coming from uh, the correction to the Hartree Hawking wave function from the uh, 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 topology change. This can be thought of as a quantum interference effect. And this minus sign have a very uh, similar origin as a minus sign in the subreading one garden that uh, uh, in an early paper with Douglas we calculated. So if we cut, uh, if we're taking account of these two effects, then in the end, we got a probability distribution of the uh, edge of the black hole for uh, black hole interior for uh, informing observer. Let's call this edge as eta. Then without any uh, non perturbative effects, this uh, uh, probability will be a dead function concentrated at the boundary time t. But after taking into account of this uh, single baby universe emission process, then the um, probability of uh, remaining at uh, the boundary time becomes smaller, becomes one minus t squared e to the minus two s, and uh, it removes the probability and spread over into this various other states range from minus t to t. And uh, the uh, probability of uh, hitting a firewall coming from the integral, uh, uh, the probability mass coming from minus t, minus t to zero. And uh, that becomes order one when t is order e to the s. Uh, that's all, thank you. We have time for some questions. Daniel. Uh, hi, Genvi, this is Daniel Harlow. Hey, Daniel. Yeah, it, it, it seems to me that there's some, I don't know, intuition or assumption, at least in getting this 50-50, that mm -hmm. in some sense, there's like a complete basis of states, you know, which are either white holes or black holes. So, or maybe if we, we could say like, you know, states where the length is either increasing or, or decreasing, there's a complete basis like that. But I would have naively thought that there are lots of states where it's doing neither, right? Just like there are lots of states where entropy is neither increasing nor decreasing. So, I mean, yeah, do you actually think that there's like a complete basis where of states where, you know, they're either definitely black holes or definitely white holes? No, I, uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, I don't, I don't think so. There's a complete state with uh, like a definite white hole or definite black holes for the time is bigger than e to the s. Like here we're saying that uh, there's a box state. I don't know what's, I think by state you mean the boundary states, right? Yeah, that's I, right. I assume, right. So, so like here we're saying that uh, the boundary states uh, does not mean a unique uh, box state. As time goes on, this box state can, uh, there, there seems to be a notion of the um, box state where there's a complete white hole box state or um, a complete black hole state. But I don't know whether that can be expressed as a boundary state. Well, maybe another way to say it is that you used this term gray hole at the beginning of the lecture and you said that that was maybe like a superposition of white and black. 
But I would have said a gray hole is neither. It's just another kind of state that you can have. And maybe even most of the states are, are gray holes. Those are states which, you know, at no time was there ever clearly the, you know, the bridge was short. Um, yeah. And if, and if that's the right picture, then the probability of having a firewall is one minus e to the minus s, which is very different from 50%. Sorry, why you say it's one minus e to the minus s? <laughs> Well, because most of the states are gray holes. They're neither white holes nor black holes. There's an, but, another uh, state. No, but uh, the question is, when you're jumping into the gray hole, do you hit a firewall or not? And yeah, that's probably the probability is one minus e to the minus s. That, to me, that seems the more natural guess. Well, I, it seems to rely on the assumption that there are no other kind of states besides these two that you drew. Well, I think. We need to distinguish between box state and boundary state, right? Well, I'm talking think, about boundary states, but that, yeah, you are talking about boundary state. Yeah, the boundary yes. state should have a unique bulk interpretation at a fixed time. I hope, otherwise, ADS is not equal to CFT. But it might be strange, right? Well, that's fine, but that's a, yeah, yeah. I, I would guess most of them would be weird, which is why I'm saying I feel the probability should be one minus e to the minus s. Yeah, but does it even make sense to have an observer jumping into this thing if there's no geometry? Yeah, the exterior like... should just look like the exterior of the oh, black okay. hole by basic sort of thermodynamics. Yeah. But then when you cross, once you cross the horizon, yeah, I would guess you see a mess. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. But I mean, it seems to me there's some hidden assumption here about kind of class grading all the states in the whole Hilbert space into length getting bigger or length getting smaller. Well, we, we're trying to trust this classical, or it could be that if you're jumping at the, like uh, the super high energy collision give you something weird, but uh, we're just trying to use a uh, classical um, picture with the- like for, for most of the states of the gas in this room, there was never a time where all the gas was up in the corner. You know, a yes. white hole, a black hole is a state like that. Yeah, I agree, yeah. But I, 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 saying it's weird doesn't mean you definitely hit a firewall. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and here we are. It's true that those uh, daytime black hole states are weird, and this is a particular we are exploring what the weirdness it can have, and that's what I will answer. Yeah. Any other uh, questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you made a certain choice for uh, how you define the interior of the black hole. This is Luca, by the way. Uh, yeah, Can you hi, Luca. Tell a little yeah, bit yeah. why uh, why you made that choice. Why uh, other geodesics cannot also be viewed as the black hole interior. That's number one. And number two, with this choice, you explained that it uh, exists. The shortest geodesic uh, exists at genus one. But can we really think that it's, it can be defined at every genus? In order to really say what happens when t is of order e to the s, right? <clears throat> when t is ordered. So the first question is about uh, the choice of uh, uh, sizing. Yeah, uh, here we ma we make a uh, we make a choice which is based on this no shortcut condition. But the underlying assumption is the following. First of all, if we're jumping this uh, uh, jumping in this uh, wormhole geometry, and uh, we assume that uh, this interior should be uh, one of the unshot geometries. Uh, that to me is like reasonable assumption. And that's why we uh, throw away those geometries. And uh, then if we only look at the unshot geometries, uh, there's a, a redundancy between those uh, gauge equivalents between all those, uh, all those uh, firewall states. Like uh, if you have a, uh, uh, a or A prime, but those are all firewall states. You can you can simply live with that by saying that okay, now if they just firewall, we just count it without uh, uh, so we just count it as a hidden firewall. But further furthermore, I think uh, among those firewall states, what one really hit should be the one that uh, have the shortest length, and that's um, basically because. Uh, I think uh, the interior should have a, a locality. Otherwise, I cannot trust if uh, like uh, something moving around with geodesic, but there's uh, like a, a, a shortcut. Why do I trust the classical description? That's the uh, two assumptions I made. But yeah, 
but you can come up with other assumptions. Like for example, you can just talk about uh, uh, choosing the shortest geodesic. And that, for example, will sometimes will pick up those offshore ge geometries. So that will give you some different uh, answer, but basically it only changes the prefactor, like change from one half to some, something above with three, I forget. But doesn't factor that uh, it grows with T squared. So I think uh, the conclusion, uh, even if you like you choose different size, should uh, not change the conclusion that uh, the probability of hitting a firewall becomes other one. And whether it becomes other one minus e to the minus s, as Daniel was talking about, I'm not sure. Like it seems from this mechanism, uh, it will be half half. Uh, then the qu second question, sorry, the second question is about uh, higher genus wormholes, right? So, uh, or the short answer is I don't know. I haven't thought about it, and uh, but uh, I there's something funny happens for uh, for this uh, uh, spectrum form factor, for example, one can talk about. So for the spectrum form factor, the effect of a homogeneous wormholes just uh, truncates the uh, terminates the linear growth into a constant, so it just stops the growth. <clears throat> there. Like there's some progress of understanding this uh, uh, coming from hygienous high wormhole corrections, but uh, so far not uh, no very satisfactory answer has been achieved. It can happen that uh, for this process, when we consider hygienous wormholes, it also terminates such that uh, this answer just uh, becomes one half and one half. Well, that's a speculation. I don't have a... a, a Okay, maybe let me add one more comment. Like, since you already, you, yeah. Like, uh, one can think about a, a toy model of this firewall uh, paradox of uh, thinking about a particle moving in a billet. So we start with the initial point and the shooting a particle. Then one can ask whether the initial point is lying in the future of this trajectory. So at early time, the particle just deviate. So you certainly this initial point is in the past. But after, as time goes on, this particle will follow, can follow on a, a, a close orbit such as come back to itself. This is basically the mechanism we're exploring. Uh, for a finite dimensional cable system, this particle can come back to its initial point and sometimes lie in the future of the initial point if the close orbit is large, but you are on part of the trajectory. So, uh, so one can consider this problem, but less time becomes bigger than e to the s, so uh, or bigger than the Hilbert space dimension. Then what happens is that all the trajectory will be part of the periodic orbits because there's not there's only this that that number of Hilbert uh, like a uh, Hilbert space you can uh, explore, and after uh, time the length is bigger than the volume of the Hilbert space, it has to come back to itself. It may lie in a smaller uh, orbits or bigger orbits, but it's at, anyway, it's a uh, form of closed orbits. Then in that scenario, you as on the way that's going further away from the initial point or going the way that's coming close to the initial point. And that will give you a 50-50% for that problem. If you're just talking about uh, whether the distance is getting large, uh, distance of the later point is uh, getting larger from the initial point or getting smaller with the initial point. And it could be that uh, the, by summation of the uh, hygienous wormhole effect, that uh, effectively give you uh, this 50 50. Uh, if that makes sense to you. But, but that, that, that's a, like the initial idea how we start to think about this problem. Yeah. Well, thank you. So maybe in the interest of time, we should just thank Shen Bin again. Thank you.